Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben You here for another Legacy video. Um, I'm actually pretty hyped for this one. Um, so, you know, my mom passed away recently and I didn't look at, you know, any of my analytics for a long time. And I, I went back and I finally started crawling through things today. And I found out that when I played this, like, Legacy Glimpse Affinity deck previously, it got 30,000 views. Uh, and I was just absolutely blown away. So, uh, YouTube followers, message received, you want to see this again. I, I got it. So, Min H threw me a uh, dealer's choice donation deck list, and uh, we're going to run this back. Although, I've, I've made some few changes. In case you didn't see the original version of the deck, the general game plan is that we cast a Glimpse of Nature, and then we play literally our entire deck afterwards. The deck is full of zero-cost creatures like Memnites and Ornithopters and Friends, as well as affinity creatures that get cheaper for all of these these little shitters that you play. And then we can, you know, play another glimpse or play some thought monitors and thought casts in the middle to kind of go and bridge the gap to the late game. And then we will win the game with a Thassa's Oracle. Um, assuming that we can count correctly how many glimpse of natures we've cast and not, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe kill ourselves on turn one. Um, that definitely didn't happen the last time that I played this. Absolutely not. I'd never make a rookie mistake like that. Um, after some feedback from the last video, I have decided to promote Salvage Titan to the main deck, seeing as it came in like basically every round. Uh, I was just very happy with this card, uh, so I took out the 7-drop improvised creature for two of these in the main deck, and I left the other two in the sideboard. Um, something else that was requested in a bunch of the comments was adding a copy of Grapeshot as an alternative finisher. Thassa's Oracle should win the game through everything, but if the opponent is playing counter spells, I either want to have like a Cavern of Souls or like a Grape Shot that could win through most things. Um, so I think that's a pretty low cost uh, one of in the sideboard. Last time around, I don't think we ever stuck a Nettle Cyst. I'm going to keep them in the deck and see how they do, along with the Carpet of Flowers that are meant to like power them out or, you know, help me play around soft permission like Spell Pierce and Days but a lot of the other sideboard slots I've replaced with Noxious Revival. Okay, so let's talk about why I've, I've done that. Uh, last time around I had four Tormod's Crypt in the sideboard, and against many graveyard decks, putting the thing on top of their library is just as good as removing it, right? Like, uh, you know, reanimate my Grizzlebrand, oops, it's on top of your library, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Now, that's not always going to be the case. But Noctis Revival can also allow us to put our Glimpse of Natures back on top of our deck to continue comboing or get it back after they're countered, uh, which I think is pretty potent. Um, on another note here, I am trying some slightly different audio settings for today's video, and it's always one of those things where it's like, well, I can test it, but I won't really know how it sounds until I upload it to YouTube, and so that, that requires me recording the old league. Um, so if you notice anything is particularly better or worse about today's audio, just let me know. I'm futzing with things. Hey, I know what the problem is, but figuring out how exactly to fix it, that's a, that's a whole nother thing. So working on that. Anyway, I hope that you'll enjoy this. Please consider subscribing to the channel for Legacy Modern and Vintage Action five days a week. And if you're already subscribed, please throw me a like before we get started. It's the easiest way to support my content. All right, let's let's get these robots into play. Are you ready to rumble? Oh yeah, we're 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 gonna go for it on turn one. Oh, my opponent's mulliganing to five. Maybe they're gonna go for it on turn one. What if they go for it on turn one before I get to go for it on turn one? Maybe we need Leyline of Anticipation so we can go for it before they can go for it. Okay, ancient don't 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 fucking challenge me. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. Oh, thank God. <laughs> That was, uh, that was close. Something bad almost happened. But instead, something great is going to happen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We are going to the moon. You think they have ornithopters on the moon? I bet they do. If not on the moon, where are they going to be? Frogmite? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now all of the affinity stuff is going to be free for the rest of the game. I already have the mana for my win condition. I would like to find another glimpse. Um, and then we'll be good to go. 
Uh, note, I could probably just like pass the turn here as well and just kill my opponent next turn with combat damage. Like that's that's what happens if we quote unquote fizzle. All right. So I will sacrifice three artifacts that do not have power here. Or the salvage titan. Nice, nice. We'll keep going. Opponent's a good sport. Letting me do it. Okay, so this this is probably the end of my combo. Um, but it was a it was a pretty good combo. Oh nope, we're not done. We continue on. Now we're done. Okay, we uh we we made a sufficient amount of power that I can be proud of. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna just take a screenshot real quick, you know, for Twitter. Got to keep the Twitter folks up to date. It's very important. I got to 20 storm count. We could have grape shot it. Instead we made 6, 12, 13, 17, 21, 25, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33 power. Pretty decent. All right, opponent, how's your turn look? It's, uh, it's got to be pretty wild. Yep, that's the... That's the turn one win. <laughs> Starting the video off strong. Um, okay, so we're playing against some Tezzeret adjacent deck, you know, maybe a Mystic Forge combo deck, maybe a Dice Factory, um, something like that. So I'm probably going to board in this stuff. I want to board out. I also could board in the Grape Shot. For, for the times when... I fizzle. The Grape Shot is better than the Thassa's Oracle. The Thassa's Oracle is probably worse than Grape Shot against Counterspells in many cases. And a Grape Shot should still just kill just as easily as Thassa's Oracle would. I think I will bring in these. Oh, maybe I don't want the Nettle Cysts. I'm for sure boarding in those three cards over maybe like two of the improvised cards like one thought monitor or something. Oh. Oh right. I I boarded out the Thassa Oracle for the Grape Shot, so I only need to board in two. And now the question is like, do I want the Nettle Cysts as a plan B? Because I'm pretty stone cold dead to a chalice on zero. It's it's rough. Yeah, I should probably board these in. Take out a little bit of my top end. And just leave myself with some secondary win conditions. I also don't know to what extent my opponent is actually going to have counter spells. Like, they showed me a blue signet and a blue land, but that it doesn't necessarily mean anything. This hand is going to be a mulligan. Like, I can make a couple of frog mites, but we're, we're looking to do the thing. Uh, this one doesn't... This one doesn't work. It's got, like, nettle cysts and not the mana to cast them. My opponent's also going pretty deep here. I will keep this hand. I get five of these... Probably the thought cast goes back, and probably my second land goes back, and we still attempt the turn one. My opponent chalice is on zero, it's pretty devastating. But you know, it is what it is. It it feels like my opponent is mulliganing to a chalice. Actually, are they supposed to chalice on one? They're probably supposed to chalice on one. Because if they chalice on zero and I play a glimpse, I can still just cycle all my stuff. Oh, are they just going to echo? Okay, yep, Chalice on zero. I mean, I will just turn my zero drops into other cards. That's fine. Like, we'll, we'll try to find some frog mites or something. Here we go. Off to the races. Yeah, yeah, all right. Always yield to the Chalice. Always yield to that. And we will sacrifice some creatures and draw some cards. The frog mites are a little tricky to get in play, I uh, must admit, but we will get there. Now we can also artifact land cycle this. The next turn I can play a 2-2, uh, which is gas. We'll call that a turn. Honestly, if I can get like a 2-2 and my opponent doesn't have something that's threatening here, it's not actually all that bad for me, right? Alright, so land, frog mite. Alright, I have a threat. Kills in 10 turns. 
We're not quite to this mana yet. But I will be to thought cast mana. Yeah, that's fine. Ooh. Now am I to this mana? I am to this mana. Hot diggity dog. You thought you could stop me with two chalices? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, uh... I, I think my opponent had a good plan, but I was I was aware of my outs to what they were doing. All right, how good was your top deck? That's pretty good. How big is that? That's a six six. That's a hell of a top deck. I might be able to go wide of a Karn. I'm unsure. I just play this. I just play this for. Well, I guess I can do the Thought Cast first, right? Yeah, because the Thought Cast is just one mana. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go wide of this. Cast. Cast. Um, yep, I'll pass the turn there. And we'll... Uh, I can kill the Karn next turn if I want. Um, I think I just... Hmm, I don't know. Well, okay. The the turn plays itself. I don't have a lot of options. A salvage Titan. Um, so I can sacrifice a bunch of lands to get that into play. And then I can swing for 10 damage. It's not quite enough, so I don't think I want to play the salvage Titan yet until I can try to kill my opponent in one turn. I think their Karn's going to take over this game. That was a very good top deck. I can, I can sacrifice two of my Salamanders in order to kill the Karn. And that leaves my opponent with two 8-8s. Eight they can crack me back with that. Hmm. Okay, so I can send two Salamanders and a Frogmite at Karn, and Karn guaranteed dies. And I can put my opponent to 12. But then I'm really only attacking for two the next time. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I can kill this Karn. I think I have to chill for a turn and see if I can do something impressive. Uh, the good news is I don't think my opponent has counter spells. It's it's feeling like this is oh maybe they do. You can have ancient den. It feels like this is well I was going to say it feels like this is closer to a full on colorless version but I don't know how true that is. Oh fuck. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Well, it has 30 power in play. They're just chilling. Hello. We're just gonna chill. I don't I don't think I can create a lethal situation with that, because I can't get red mana. My red mana is off of zero drops. But maybe let's not let my opponent know that yet. I could use some more information about what they're doing. Okay, I have to block two of those. Or I die. So, turn plays itself in that regard, and then I don't think I have any outs. Like, I go to 8, and any one of these is going to be lethal. Yeah. Man, we got so close to beating Double Chalice there. Like, if my opponent did not top deck Karn that turn, um, I think that was the end. Okay. When I am on the play, do I want to do anything different? Probably not. Like, the Thought Monitors are more interesting when I'm on the play. I think the Thought Monitors might be more interesting than Nettle Cyst when I'm on the play, and I just attempt to mulligan to a turn one. And if I don't get the turn one, I just play the same sort of game that I was just trying to play there. Yeah, I think I'm good with that. Alright, let's see. Um, how, good is, how good is this hand? If I play one, two, three, four, five artifacts, which means that I can't quite cast that. Let's mulligan this. Okay, so, Opal, Memnite, Shield Sphere. Oh, this is, this is a weird hand. So, it goes Opal, Memnite, Shield Sphere. That turns on Metalcraft. I play Glimpse. I sacrifice all three of my artifacts to play Salvage Titan. And I have a turn one Salvage Titan that cantrips. I will have one artifact in play, making the Sojourner's Companion unlikely to draw me a card at any point in the not-too-distant future. I think I keep this. It's it's a weird one. And if my opponent does have Force of Will, 
I'm not in great shape. Well, actually, they'd probably counter the Glimpse. So I'd still have a Salvage Titan? Yeah, maybe it's okay. My opponent is mulliganing to four. How deep are you willing to go? Four is the answer. Here we go. And we'll Glimpse. Cast by sacrificing three artifacts. Draw a card. That is a Phyrexian Walker. I can keep going. Always yield to that. Oh yeah. We might get more than six power. Well, we have some artifacts. We have not succeeded in getting more than six power. But I do have a Tree of Tales, and if I draw some artifacts, I can try again. All in all, that's a pretty good turn one. I've got my opponent on probably a three-turn clock. Yep, do your thing. All right. Okay, Thoughtcast is one of the worst possible draws in my entire deck there, unfortunately. So I'll just send in. And that puts my opponent to 12. I presume they kept a hand with, like, a Karn of some variety or other if they mulled this deep and didn't keep a hand with a Chalice. They're passing? You have something just crazy like a Hercules Recall or something? I guess I'll send in the Salvage Titan and do everything else post-combat. Getcha. Okay, opponent goes to 6. They might have just kept a hand that couldn't really quite do anything. All right, let's uh, let's try to refuel. All right, um, do I want to glimpse? Yeah, I will. Doing it is not the best if my opponent has something like a Hercules Recall, but that might be me just playing scared. I'd rather become better at beating a bunch of random things that could happen. You know, like a Planeswalker hitting play or something. Although, you know. I only added one power to the board, unfortunately. Okay. Three mana. Intuition. Sure. Oh, I see. That was unexpected. Oh, that's pretty gross, huh? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, Mox Opal is not on currently. So I should probably give them the unburial rights. So that requires them to on Burial Rites, and then also have mana to activate Oriox Salvagers. Yeah, you can have the on Burial Rites. I hope I don't end up one mana away from, or one point of damage away from uh, winning this game. Okay, that was a very good draw because that is the, the Ancient Den turns on the Mox Opal, which means they can on Burial Rites the Oriox Salvagers. But when they do this, so they go to two, and then they have to chump block with the Oriox Salvagers. So they would need, like, a second Lion's Eye Diamond. Oh, and Horizon Canopy will also deal them one damage, so they'll actually be at one, so the Memnite will kill them. I believe they are dead, unless they have a Lion's Eye Diamond. And, they, well, they would also... Hmm, they'd also need, like, a way to kill. Oh, okay, I did miscount. Yeah, so they have to... Yeah, they have to block the Salvage Titan, and then I've got them. That was uh, surprisingly close for my opponent's mulligan to four there. GG's opponent. Now, they may not have had something to actually, like, combo off with, but, you know, infinite mana is pretty scary. Okay, what does my opening hand do? I play three artifacts, and then I do nothing, so we're going to mulligan this one. What does this one do? Plays three artifacts, and then does nothing, so I'm going to mulligan this one. I know what I'm about. Uh, what does this one do? This one plays one, two, three, four. Four artifacts on turn one. Fifth artifact on turn two. Oh. Huh. Oh, this is this is on five. This probably produces a turn two thought monitor. Which is not the best. Maybe I'm supposed to keep this and hope I draw a green source. How many green sources am I looking at? Twelve? Four, eight, twelve. Alright, so twelve of my sources would allow me to glimpse and just go ham. Let's keep this. I'm going to throw back... I'm going to throw back Land Thought Monitor. And just kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh! Believe in the Heart of the Cards. I need I need the glimpse in my opening hand, you know? Like, I only have one set of those, whereas I have multiple ways that I can find green mana. And if I find green mana, this hand is nuts. Mm. All right. 
about those nuts that I had. They are gone. Yetron has devoured them. Yep. Alright, so hopefully we can, uh, like, find a frog mite or something. So, each artifact you tap when you're done activating for mana abilities, pay for one. So once I have one more artifact, I can just cast a 3-3. Three, three. Not bad. So the next thing I need to figure out is, like, is this a fair or an unfair thought seize? Like, is this a Grixis control list? Is this a doomsday list? Is this a storm list? Uh, probably Grixis delver. So against Grixis Delver, we're probably not going to combo off most of the time. Oh, I will probably win by just, like, flooping a couple 4-4s into play that they can't deal with, sort of in the fashion of, like, an Urza Saga taking over a game. Yeah, I mean, this is this is what I'm doing this game. This is this is not plan A. This is not plan B. This is the, this is the plan I have to work with. Also, uh, what's a daze and uh, why should I care? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, there we go. Called shot. I I just think things are probably not getting better from here. You know, my my opponent's soft counters are going to be good for the whole game, just because like there aren't very many mana sources in my deck. Period. Um, that said, I'm probably not going to concede until my opponent actually kills me, because well, I have so many just stupid large creatures. Alright, opponent is going to be at three card types in graveyard once the Scalding Tarn hits graveyard. And there goes my frog mine. I'll miss you. I only take one this turn. That's the good news. Okay, Glimpse is cool. We'll hang out for a little while. Now this Glimpse is pretty unlikely to actually resolve, but... There's worlds where it could. I'm also not sure how many zero drops I'm supposed to have in hand before I cast it. I don't know if this is one of those, like, one is enough Yu-Gi-Oh, heart of the cards, just hope it works out sort of thing. Because you're not hoping to combo off entirely, you're just hoping to put a couple 4-4s four into play. Or if, you know, you wait until you have two or three things. Oh? <laughs> oh, oh, really? How, how bad is this? Are we, are we talking Grizzlebrand? Yeah, we are talking Grizzlebrand. I respect the hell out of that. So I played a painter deck that had a transformational sideboard. Or not, sorry. I played a storm deck that had a transformational sideboard into like um, Dragon Rage Channeler and Grizzlebrand or something like that. Um, it was pretty pretty fun. Super glass cannony. y um, I like what my opponent has going on there. So, Grixis, Delver, Reanimator, question mark. Hmm. I'm going to think for a second on how I want to board. Did I really leave two Tormod's Crypt in the sideboard? Huh. Thought I took all those out. I guess they were just off-screen during the deck tech. Oops. Perfect deck building. Um, I guess, like, the fourth Nettle Shist, the Nettle Shist should probably be there, and then maybe a second Grape Shot. Oh well. Okay. I would like, I think, some amount of this stuff. I think the Thassa's Oracle is just going to come out. I don't even know that I'm going to board the Grape Shot in, because I don't think I want to, uh, like, combo off fully. I, I think I just want to put enough power into play that my opponent dies. I think that'll usually work. I want some amount of this stuff, so I'll probably go the Foundry Assemblers out for the Salvage Titans in. I don't know, maybe I don't board in Nettle Cysts and I board in a couple Noxious Revivals to fight against their graveyard-based shenanigans while also getting my Glimpses back. I could see that being reasonable too. Like, go down on Thought Monitors and play Noxious Revivals instead. That's... that's probably fine. The Carpet of Flowers and Nettle Sits might be reasonable for when I'm on the draw. Okay. Um, I, I think I'm just going to mulligan this hand. It doesn't do anything cool. I'm here to do things that are cool. One goes three artifacts and has nothing else. I'll mulligan again. We only need to find one good hand. Alright. This is on five. I could go like one, two, three, 
four, five, thought cast, leave one ornithopter behind in my hand, and see if this hand ends up producing something that's strong enough, or I can try to mulligan to a glimpse. This is probably strong enough that I just keep it. Really. I'm pretty likely to just draw more zero drop um, artifact creatures, more likely than lands. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my secondary land here. My opponent is going to four. So it feels like they are just going to either mulligan for a force of will or a very fast reanimation hand. Okay, they are not looking to play fair delver here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Alright, thought cast. That was fucking awful thought cast. That was awful. Shame on you, thought cast. I still don't really regret keeping this hand. I think this works out as well as or better than nice. A lot of other hands. I will probably fire off the glimpse as soon as I draw a zero cost creature. Okay, cool. Not not thought sees. Not thought sees is good. I do expect that my opponent just has a force of will though. They they went real deep on the mulligans. I'll cast the thought cast. Oh yeah. Do I glimpse now? I know my opponent doesn't have a counter spell now, they're F6. I probably glimpse now. I have a Noxious Revival to find it again later if I need to. Here we go. Rude. Alright, that's my turn. Disappointing. But there there were so many things like frogmites that I could just like put into play and then all of a sudden I'm in a very good situation. I should have considered not just reviving the thought cast in response to that brainstorm. That was maybe a mistake on my end. Sure. That's fine. I'm just gonna take a natural draw now. Alright. Not the best. I'll just I'll just play it and attack in. Go, little buddy. Alright, down to 18. I'll probably not just revival a thought cast on my opponent's end step. My Memnite is getting fatal pushed. This is the worst disaster in the history of all disasters. Cut down before his prime. Just block. I will put a negative zero, negative one counter on this creature. Let's just Noxious, Noxious Revival this thought cast back. Success. Let's try to draw two. I succeed. Okay, so I have the tools necessary to attempt to combo off again. Now I just need a, a zero cost creature. Or hell, even like a frog bite or something is fine. You can't get through this shield. It is a... Uh, it's a little ridiculous here that my little tiny creatures are doing so much work in, like, protecting my life total. Do I wait? I don't think I wait. Oh yeah, let's go. Alright, this time is different. Oh, this is very good. So, I will 100% be using this as one of the things that I sacrifice, and then I'll sacrifice maybe the bad shield sphere and a land. Yeah, like sacrifice one tree of tails. Probably cast this lotus petal. I should probably sacrifice that lotus petal, actually. I have two mox opals waiting. Yeah, so let's sacrifice one, two, and then this shield sphere. Yeah. Good with that. Okay, haven't done a good job at, like, running consecutive draws, but hopefully a 6-4 is good enough. I want to just hold there. I probably just want to hold there. Again, if I'm looking to combo off and draw my whole deck, I am probably supposed to wait on a lot of these things. Ooh. But I'm not trying to combo off. I'm just trying to make, like, two four fours or something like that and, and call something like that good enough. Oh, wait. Hold on. Turn off auto yields. We're going to be returning that. Yeah, that, that coming back is actually just going to be obnoxious versus this deck, huh? Neat. Alright. Is this that? Remove them from graveyard. Yep. Yep. Sure. Alright. Dragon Rage Channeler is now a big boy. 
Nice 3-3 three, three action. Big girl. Big girl. I'll go to 17. Not feeling all that bad here. Where did that grizzle brand come from? Oh, that straight up just got scried into the graveyard. Or surveilled into the graveyard. That's super unfortunate. Okay, I think I'm going to lose to that. Yeah, like, I can get this Salvage Titan back and create a 6-4, but my opponent has a 7-7 seven, seven Life Linker. That's better than most of my fair options. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the towel here and move on to the next one. GG's, opponent. GG's. Okay, so my opening hand has double Glimpse, but no green mana, unfortunately, and I can't get to Thought Monitors. Uh, we're going to ship this one. Okay, how does this hand go? So I can play 1, 2... Three artifacts, then cast a thought cast for two and have thought monitor waiting. Uh, this is this is probably acceptable. Is this better than mulliganing deeper? Like, do I just want to try to get a glimpse kill in game one when I'm on the play? Probably, honestly. Let's mulligan. Immediately punished for my hubris. Okay. On four. How are we looking? I can play four artifacts on turn one, then get up. Uh, nope, nope. All right, we're committed. Going to Oblivion. All right, we found the glimpse, but we did not find the mana to go with it. We going to three? I think we're going to three. Land glimpse idiot. Land glimpse idiot is better than this hand. This is not land glimpse idiot. I will. I will keep this. I will. I will. Play two Memnites on turn one. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. This is, uh... This is worse than the mediocre Thoughtcast hand by a pretty uh, substantial margin, but... You never know. We could get there. We could draw Salvage Titan. Alright, we are playing against Burn. We have equal amounts of power in play, but my opponent's creature is hasty. I don't think I'm supposed to block here. I think if I win this game, I will win this game because I managed to, like, thought cast or thought monitor and, like, actually get somewhere. The mid-rangey thought monitor, thought cast hand would have been good enough to beat Burn in game one, I think. But then again, a mediocre glimpse hand also would have been good enough to beat Burn, so, you know. Oh, more goblin guides. Wrong me lands. I did not get lands. I'm gonna keep the Ornithopter in hand. I am I am going to need to moderately go off here. Jeez. Okay. Alright. That's a hell of a hand. What just entered the revealed zone? Oh it's another thought monitor. Alright, I gonna I can go ahead and concede here. At this point I'm not going to, to beat that. Um, so my opponent could have mind break traps or they could have nothing for me. Um, it's hard to say. Do you think I want salvage titans? Like, larger than three toughness is really important, so I'm going to go ahead and board this out. Uh, similarly, I think I don't want Thassa's Oracle. Um, so now, like, I'm looking at grape shots and nettle cysts to round out the tail end of this. I think I like the grape shot. Do I like nettle cysts better than some number of thought monitors? Maybe. Maybe, like, split the difference. Man. One, one tiny bit of green mana is all I am asking for. Okay, there it is. Um, how good is this hand? So, land, glimpse, ornithopter. I can salvage titan immediately. If I draw a zero drop, I can frogmite first. It's also pretty safe for me to pass the turn once here, I think. So, like, I can 100% make a Salvage Titan on turn one with one redraw to make my hand considerably better. But I think I'm just going to wait one turn here. I'm going to go ahead and pitch this. And I'll just go land go. Oh, I guess Mind Break Trap isn't even that scary, right? Like, it counts as the third spell, and Glimpse will be my first spell. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Here we go. Glimpse. Ornithopter. 
always yield to this. Mox Opal. This three artifacts. Let's play a land. Let's play this one. And the Frogmite is free. And then the Frogmite is free. Bot Monitor is one mana. Oh, that gets me into more gas. Yeah, see, this is this is the sort of thing I need. And now unless the, the burn player has something like a meltdown, I am just 100% golden. All right, uh, let's float a blue mana here. A Salvage Titan. I'll sacrifice Mox Opal, uh, an Ornithopter, and probably a Lotus Puddle. Eh, you know what? We don't. We probably don't need the Shield Sphere where we're going. Okay. Now a Thought Cast. Now a Ornithopter. All right. Still going. All right. Big beefy seven drops. Oh yeah. Second Salvage Titan. That's what I'm talking about. All right, uh, let's load a blue mana again. I think I'll just sack that again. Let's sack these three. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is this is excellent. All right, I've already played my land. We'll uh, we'll call it a turn there. I don't know how much power I have, but the answer is probably enough. Also, I want the all four Salvage Titans in the main deck. Holy shit. They're so good. This alone is 20 power, so I, I imagine we're donezo. Alright, so how am I feeling on that whole, like, Nettle Cyst versus Thought Monitor thing now? I don't know. Maybe I want the, maybe I want the Thought Monitors. Can't really articulate why, but... If I'm trying to turn one before Eidolon comes down, I think this is... Pretty important. God damn, I'm so close. Uh, what did my opponent do? My opponent began with seven cards. Uh, this one has to be a mulligan, obviously. And this one is a keep. We'll pitch one thought monitor here. What do you have for me? Yep. I'll go to 17. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Lotus Petal. Glimpse. All right. So once I can get to green mana, I can play a second glimpse. But I probably have to play two artifacts in order for that to happen. All right. So I can play salvage. I can play glimpse and then play salvage titan and get two draws afterwards. That's probably worth doing. All right. Act three artifacts. One, two. Three. Ah, shit. I fizzled. I'll play a land. I only control two artifacts. Uh, when I get another land, this can land cycle. Uh, we'll see if a 6-4 is good enough. My opponent can have, like, a Braids and Smash the Smithereens and stuff. But this thing just comes back. Not yet. <laughs> but once I get some artifacts, it'll, it'll come back. I guess I should not F6 in case my opponent plays Grave Hate, but I'm not expecting that. Uh, yeah. Just gonna pass the turn. Didn't have too many misses off the Salvage Titan. But I, I both hit my misses and my opponent had a smash for it. And it has to be smash because all the other removal spells in the deck don't kill it. Well, unless you're the one person who plays the Flame Javelins. <laughs> okay. This is not the best, but I have lines now. Always yield. Pass the opal. Now I have red mana. Use the Eidolon. Pay red and one. Yes, I will take my damage. Alright, so one of these goes here. Then this one goes here. And we'll see if my opponent has Mind Break Trap. Okay. So now, I will exile one, two, three artifacts from my graveyard and return Salvage Titan to my hand. Now, we will go all in on a 6-4 again. Alright, I did as much wiggling as I can. I'm dead to two lightning bolts, and my opponent has four cards in hand, though. So, like, you know. Alright, there's the first one. And there's the second one. Alright, got a little unlucky that time, but, you know. I'm 100% I'm rolling the dice when I'm playing this deck. GG's.
All right, what's my opening hand do? Lotus Petal, Glimpse, Shield Sphere. I'll have Mox Opal as well for Metalcraft for another mana. I, I probably keep this one. I'm on the draw. I'm pretty likely to draw a zero cost thing between my first two draw steps to allow me to keep going. All right, my opponent is playing counter magic, unfortunately. I mean, I mean like, I'm supposed to just cast it, right? Like, I have no lands in hand. I can't really play around a daze anyway. Let's go. Oh, that sure felt like an F6. Oh, no. Oh, baby. Here we go. <laughs> We're doing the thing. Oh, I really need to draw another zero cost thing here. And then I can, like, cast a second glimpse, and I'll be pretty unlikely to fizzle from there. Come on, come on. Uh, Salvage Titan counts. Salvage Titan counts. I haven't hit land drops yet either, for what that's worth. Glimpse. Cast by sacrificing three artifacts. Get two draws out of it. Alright, good. I was going to be very sad if we uh, we fizzled at that point. I want to I keep going. I want to cast these thought monitors. Do the stuff. I wonder if I have a little bit too much top end. All right, totally happy with drawing a land. I wish it was a blue land. Blue land's significantly better. So one, two, three, four, five. That means you cast two. Uh, so that'll be the turn. I have uh, I have six, seven drops in hand. Just throwing it out there. Don't know uh, how likely that is. All right, so we're playing against a Luren. I will probably be faster than them most of the time, but they will probably have more interaction than I do. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. How do I want to do this? There's so many ways to play this turn. I think I just want to, like, guaranteed put in some power. Oh, I don't know. I think this is fine. This line doesn't allow me to glimpse if I draw a glimpse, though. Eee. It's okay. I, th I think I'm all about, you know, power and toughness right now. And we'll see if my opponent can just naturally turn for me. They need the Aluren and the combo pieces. Uh, having cast no manipulation. That, that is a pretty big ask, but it, it can happen. Okay. The Wirewood Symbiote. Sure, sure, sure. I'm not going to kill my opponent next turn, I don't think. But, uh, I will do some damage, and I'll, I'll take some bodies off the board. All right. Well, let's start here. Let's, uh, draw some cards, shall we? I think so. Drawing cards is great. When you draw cards and make robots, that's way better, though. Uh, well, I guess we can Thought Monitor for one mana. Why... My creatures just have so much, so much attached to them. Guess I can play this land. And Thought Monitor again. Yeah, I, I realistically could. <laughs> okay, my opponent is, is done with my shit. That's fair. I I don't know if I'd say things were deterministic there, but I was I was pretty far ahead at that point. Okay, how do I want a sideboard versus this deck? Grape Shot's not an instant, so I can't just, like, let them start comboing off and then finish them with a Grape Shot. Womp womp. Um, I think like I'm doing every round, I'm gonna just, like, sub those other Salvage Titans in, because they are hot. Um, I'll send those out. I think I like Grape Shot over Thassa's Oracle here, just because it can pick off little chump blockers. I also probably don't hate Carpet of Flowers in some number. Because the Carpet of Flowers can help with that, like, seven-drop glut problem that happens. I don't, I don't think I want all three. I think I want, like, two. Very scientific numbers. I'll board out one thought monitor. Two thought monitors? Maybe two thought monitors for those. Although it's a little counterproductive to board out a couple of the seven-drops that I'm, like, potentially bringing these into cast, but that's okay. On the draw, I don't think I'll 
sorry, on the play, if we go to a game three, I don't think I will play Carpet of Flowers. Okay, uh, this hand just produces a Salvage Titan on turn one. Oh wait, no it doesn't. With any zero cost artifact, it would produce a Salvage Titan on turn one. Uh, but I don't think I want to risk that. Let's mulligan this. Uh, this will certainly produce a Salvage Titan on turn one. Yeah, this is, this is fine. I'm going to throw back uh, just the one of the two things that doesn't have power and toughness here. Okay, my opponent has Mulligan to five cards, so they may have Mulligan to a Force of Will. Force of Will on Salvage Titan is annoying, but it's not the end of the world because it just comes back. Alright, not a Thoughtseize effect. Good news for Phil fans. Alright. Yeah. 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 If I am left with one thing, I think I want to be left with a Mox Opal, because that can cast the blue stuff and the green stuff. I think I, think I am going to play this. Float this mana. Cast by sacrificing one, two, three artifacts. All right. I have produced nine power on turn one. Your go. And I can do it again if my Salvage Titan dies. What do you have for me? Baleful Strix, aww. Okay, that's presumably a Collector Oof. Sure. I will attack you for eight. Uh, I only have four artifacts right now. Is this attack correct? This attack might be correct if they take the free value. No, they're not, they're not going to trade away their Collector Oof for the Frogmite. Yep. Okay. Collector Oof might be a reason to keep some, whatchamacallits in, Carpet of Flowers, but I have to have the Carpet of Flowers down before the Collector Oof. Yeah, maybe not. Alright, Leovold. Sure. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Still not to Mirror Enforcer. I'll continue to send in Salvage Titan. See if Leovold just hops in front of the bus. Nope. Now, my opponent can probably chump block for a very long time. Their their deck is going to be full of, you know, uh, the Coiling Oracles, the Wirewood Symbiotes, uh, things of that nature. So, I, I cannot celebrate yet. Opposition. Okay. That's pretty good. We're just going to always yield to the opposition. This is actually... Not all that bad for me. Because of my affinity threats, I'll still be able to cast them for free without tapping any lands. Yeah, this this is not over. Alright, opponent is at three. My worst draws are going to be things like glimpses and um, like thought casts and stuff. Okay. At some point I will return that, but I'm just going to let that chill in the graveyard for a while. I'll take four here. But I, I think I need to get to like higher affinity counts to get stuff like this into play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tap tap my stuff. It's it's fine. Alright, so that's five artifacts. We'll see how hard my opponent is willing to turn things sideways. Uh, why would Symbiote Reclamation Sage is fucking obnoxious? I think I'm just gonna concede to that. I think that like I'm going to lose a permanent to that every turn. Um, then I'm not going to get my high, like a high enough count to do this stuff. Yep, that's fine. Alright, so I now know about opposition. And opposition means things that have colorless costs in many ways are better than things that don't. So I think I'm going to junk the thought monitors for these. How do I feel about the carpets? Carpets are weird. I think I just want to try to kill my opponent effectively on turn one or two. Maybe that means bringing some of these back in. All right. Because if, if, if I have a Carpet of Flowers and I don't just, like, get it into play immediately, it doesn't do a ton. All right. I mean, this is nine power on turn one. I surely can't throw this back. All right. Here we go. Yeah. 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 Uh, actually, not Walker's art is dope. Now it's Frogmite time. Walker. Okay, so I'll... I know, I don't even need to float this mana here. 
I will sacrifice one, two, three. I've successfully made the Salvage Titan on turn one. And if my opponent kills it, I still have three artifacts in play to bring it back. <laughs> when it says all first hand, lol. Right? This deck is silly. What do you have? You've got a bird. Fine. Okay, so I have four artifacts. Not even close to casting this, but I'm hoping the game is over in two turns. And, um... Now my opponent's mana acceleration means they can do something like a Collector Oof or a uh, Reclamation Sage this turn that could have a high impact on the game. But since I can, uh... Just bring this back a second time. Just killing this isn't going to be enough to, to stop me. Yeah, and, and I know I've already said this, but like, man, all four Salvage Titans need to be in the main deck. That card is a champ. Just It just means you have more hands that don't have to be based around Glimpse that are totally reasonable. Oh, just naturally had it. Oh, that's fine. It's very good, obviously, but I have a lot of pressure in play. Send it, send it. Alright, opponent goes to three. Is there any reason why I need to play a Shield Sphere? What? Well, specifically why I need to play a Shield Sphere now? I don't think so. That would only be five towards the count for Mirror Enforcer. I think I can wait on the off chance that, like, Collector Oof ends up dying and I draw a glimpse. Ooh, that's, that's a scary land. Alright, what do you have? Okay. So, that'll be Leovold. I oh no, it could just be, uh... The Rex Sage. Blow this up, I'll get it back. All it has to do is connect once. But this is working against my my affinity count, so to speak. One, two, three. Oopsie daisy. And let's sacrifice one, two, three artifacts to put this back into play. And now I'll send the Frogmite in. I would be happy with a trade for either one of these or a chump block. If the Wrecked Sage dies, then it can't be bounced by a Wirewood Symbiote later. Okay, yeah, we are getting the trade. Now, if my opponent can play an opposition now, I probably don't beat it. Okay. What do you got for me? My opponent also might be able to just, like, produce enough chump blockers that I can't ever get through it. But they're at two. All right. Questing Beast, sure. That's pretty annoying. Vigilant. Uh, which is particularly relevant here. I think I'm just taking that damage. Hope to get a whole bunch of, like, Memnites, Frogmites, things like that. But, like, Ball, Ball is in my opponent's court here for sure. Like, I, I can't produce any mana. And they've got a deck full of mid-rangey bullshit that can get in the way of my creatures. I'm very close to the finish line, but I don't think I am going to get over it. All right. Damage report. Boiling Oracle is fine. Sure. Guy has cradle amounts of mana. A green sun for four. You have another four drop? This may just be a laziness four. Just pump all the mana from Guy's cradle into it. Okay. I think I'm just going to concede here. I think my opponent now has enough creatures and enough stuff going on that I can just, uh, just call it good here. I had my fun. GG's opponent. Okay, this is a really awkward opening hand. I have double glimpse and the ability to cast double glimpse, but I don't have any zero drop creatures. Now, there's like, I don't know, 30 of them in this deck or some shit like that. So I have a very good chance of casting one, but... I'm not sure that I'm actually supposed to keep this hand. I think I'm in a mulligan. Okay, so I cannot get Metalcraft. And if I do get Metalcraft, it costs me my Shield Sphere. So can't really glimpse until I control four artifacts. That's really awkward. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to five. Go four. Fuck. Okay. At four, I probably just keep, like, these four cards and call that good. Um, but this is a little disappointing. All right, 
Goodbye. 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 Let's just spike Tree of Tails or Lotus Petal and uh, everything will be fine. Oh no. Okay. Wow. Ass. Okay. Uh, this is good stuff. I need... I think I'm going to wait a turn. I can technically go, like, walker, walker. Okay, uh, Urza Saga is fine. We are hoping to end the game before that sort of thing ticks up. I don't, I don't know exactly what my opponent is playing. It could be the Urza Saga Red Prison, but I thought that didn't play Lotus Petal. So they might just be a blue variant or something that's just, like, missing blue mana to start things off. Now I can go, like, Walker, Walker, Opal, Glimpse, Ornithopter, Frogmite. Is that enough? Could be enough. Also could not be enough. I think I'm going to pass the turn again. I will go for it next turn, I think, no matter what, but... I, I think I need to win the game with this Glimpse. That is, that is just the feeling that I get. Okay. Okay, well... This is actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess technically. Well, there's there's different ways you could sequence that. Glimpse. Are you a Force of Will deck? Oh. <sighs> let's let's uh, let's go to the next game. That's uh, that's pretty annoying. So starting like I've done every round. Let's make this adjustment. We got the deck that might have counter spells. Let's make that same swap that I've made the last couple of times. And then I have to think about nettle cysts. My nettle cysts, on average, will probably be bigger than my opponent's Urza Saga tokens. But I think I usually win by going wide of my opponent rather than trying to go taller. I might want access to one or two of these, but I don't think I want all three. Support in two over two thought monitors and call that good. I'm not super great at getting the nettle cysts into play, but I, I do want to have access to those. Uh, this hand does not do anything. This hand can go one, two, three, four, or something like that, and then play a thought cast. I could go like Memnite Opal, thought cast for two mana. Okay, this, this is going to be a keep, and I'll throw back one Phyrexian Walker. I'll just kind of see how this one goes. Land, Opal, M Knight, and I, I think I'm just going to stop here and do the Thought Cast now. So if I draw a Glimpse, I want to be able to cast that next turn. I think the possibility of Glimpse next turn is better than the possibility of Salvage Titan this turn. Like, the, the sooner you cast a threat like a Salvage Sight, the better. But I think I've got too much going on for me to want to just, like, stop here. Alright. You're just gonna, like, echo me. Alright. Let's try it. Okay. It's happening. Alright. Always yield. Lotus Petal is a fine pickup. Yeah. Now we're... We're doing pretty well. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you're fine. I will go ahead and just cast the Lotus Petal now. Get an Ancestral off this Thought Monitor. Play a Salamander. Play more other Salamander. Play not technically a Salamander, but Salamander adjacent card. Uh, thought Cast is fine. Ooh. Do I keep going with Glimpses here? Probably keep going with glimpses here. Glimpse. Salvage Titan, sacrifice one, two, three. Oh, I could also do some lines where I loop multiple Salvage Titans together. Like sacrifice one to the other, then return them to keep drawing cards. That's super neat. There are a hundred percent should be four of those in the main deck for that reason, now that I've thought of that. Alright, so I'll play a new Mox Opal. Arm is fifteen. Oh yeah. Life is good. A glimpse again? Probably glimpse again. Wait, now I have uh, I've already played a land. Can't a glimpse again yet. Have the possibility to later. 
28 cards remaining. Just kind of passively need to keep an eye on that number. Um, let's get some of these large threats into play. Oh no, I don't have three shitty things that I want to sacrifice yet. I have too many good cards that I'm casting. First world problems. Um, now I've got like Shield Sphere, Memnite, Memnite, that's fine. All right, 18 cards remaining. Oop, didn't want to cast that, but that's fine. Get in there, guys. All right, now let's find that Grape Shot and just win this turn. Um, guess we'll Frog Might. Play a new one of these. Keep this one. Frog Might. Uh, do I have more Frog Mites in here somewhere? No, okay. I'll play an Ornithopter then. And, alright, there's a new Salvage Titan. I guess, like, Salvage Titans are just upgrades to these other things. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's there's the Grape Shot. Grape Shot, target you. Storm is 32. I think this is another screenshot moment. This one's for Bryant. Have to troll Bryant with the best Storm deck things. Same targets. There's so many of them. They're very much off screen. I say this is just the uh, the salt I won't concede to your jank combo deck. I mean, you do you. Goodbye. Okay. Um, on the draw, the nettle cysts are better and worse simultaneously in some ways. Like, they're better because my opponent can, like, get on board with Urza's Saga earlier, but they're worse because they're more likely to get, like, echoed away if they get stuck in my hand. And I'm really... I'm the less stable deck, so I'm looking to win earlier. Uh, let's take the Thought Monitors on the draw. Yep, hand's great. Now, you know, I can get screwed by a Chalice or whatever, but... Um, generally speaking, this hand is quite strong. What do you have? Sure. Yep. Okay. Sure. I'm just going to get Karned on turn one. Three. Four. And I'm going to get Karned on turn one. I, I guess I just make a Salvage Titan. What do I want to sacrifice to this? Oh, I can also make Frogmite. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I guess I go with these three. Or no, Fire Extinct Walker is worse. So let's cast this, sacrificing one, two, and three. There is enough power to kill Karn. God damn it. You got turn one Karn with Force of Will backup? That, that's bullshit. Absolutely. Oh no, I fucked up, I fucked up. I could have played the Shield Sphere and then played the Salvage Titan again. Shit, 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 shit. Oh, now I'm going to lose a Opal to a Karn Plus. Oh, I'm not going to lose an Opal to a Karn Plus. Oh, but I could, I could have just fucking done it again. I might have punted this game. Oh my god, did they really draw Echo as their next card? Okay. That's not the end of the world. Um, but I, I did seriously mess up last turn. Alright, so there's Shield Sphere. Exile one, two, three cards. I'll attack Karn. Karn will go to two. And then I will junk my board to make the Salvage Titan. And now we'll see if my opponent wants to effectively gain six life by keeping the Karn around, or whether they're just going to minus it for some bullet. Okay. They have an Ensnaring Birds that's super awkward for me. All right, here we go. They didn't crack LED in response. A Damping Sphere. Okay, but Damping Sphere is not something that wins the game. You're on... Well, I guess it's a four-turn clock. I don't mind another one of those. That's a that's a good way to have a backup plan. So in case you're not familiar with this one, a land is tapped for two or more mana. It produces a Cuddleless instead, and each spell a player casts costs one more for each other spell that player has cast. So it's a... Uh, it's going to be pretty hard for me to do things that matter. Um, 
But my opponent has another draw that they get to cash in here. Um, so they're not 100% running on empty, but I'm probably favored here. There's going to be a lot of dead draws in that deck right now. Um, Emery is okay. That echo is very strange for them. I am not sure if they are supposed to cast that. Like, it allows them to refuel, but it also allows me to refuel. And, like, this would also get rid of their graveyard. That's a tough decision. Okay, they're opting to not. So I'll crash in. And they're at seven. What you got? Okay. I believe that's not tappable. Well, I mean, like, technically they can tap it, but then, like, Salvage Titan puts them into lethal. That's also only worth one colorless mana. Okay, they're going for the Echo pre-Emery activation. I'm not sure how I feel about that. But it is what it is. Um, my hand probably got better. They've got a bunch of mana, though. They can do stuff. Didn't draw any lands, though, which is unfortunate. So my opponent's Damping Sphere is potentially going to get in the way of themselves here. Okay, that's annoying. That's all they're getting this turn. Okay. Land is good. So I force a chump block, uh, presumably on Emery here. Get in there, my Salvage Titan. The very last point or two of damage might be a little tricky this game. Alright, uh, so no, no Glimpse, but I get to do other stuff. Alright. Talked about that on the other side of the battlefield. Didn't talk about it on my own. So... I have a fourth one in play. Alright, so it's probably going to take me about two turns to make the Sojourner's Companion, uh, which is inconvenient. Yeah, so now this costs two. Yeah, that, that Damping Sphere is real important here. I'm mostly just happy that my opponent didn't have an Ensnaring Bridge in the sideboard, because I have one out to that and it's a Grape Shot. I want things that are like Frogmite sized that don't like trade with a Thopter. Oh wow, oh they're junking the Damping Sphere. Okay, they're, they're rationalizing that they can do more damage with their Psy than I can do with my spells. I'm unsure whether that is true. It depends on what their hand looks like. Uh, but it's looking good for them right now. Very good. So they can trade four Thopters for my Salvage Titan and make me do the Song and Dance again. A lot of those were Bobbles, so my opponent will get redraws. Hmm. Not the best for me. And if I just, like, throw away the Salvage Titan willy-nilly, that's problematic for different reasons. Shit. Well, this was an interesting game, if nothing else. I don't know exactly what's in your sideboard, but I have a feeling that just plussing on my Tree of Tales and keeping my Artifact countdown, meaning that I never get to, like, put in Affinity cards, is probably better than tutoring. Especially since you've already tutored twice already. Unless there's something sweet in exile. No. What the fuck? You have a fucking ensnaring bridge. And earlier you had the opportunity to go, like, Karn, minus crack LED, put the ensnaring bridge into play. And you didn't? What the fuck? <laughs> that, that is tilting. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Alright, so I go, yeah... Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Shit, I'm one short of this. I'm gonna send this attacker in at their face and see how they react to it. See if they quadruple block or if they just chump block. Alright, they're going with chump. In which case, I guess I make a second salvage titan. Actually, is that optimal? It means that I basically won't get the Sojourner's Companion into play ever. I could try to like wait a turn or two, like draw another artifact land or another zero drop, and then play both of these in the same turn. The ensnaring bridge is kind of rough, especially if my opponent can stop typing this ancient tomb somehow. There's also just like Karn plus on my artifact land, but I don't know. Yeah. Let's produce the second creature. Uh, that's that's going to be the end of me. Yeah, sure. sure. Send them in. 
I guess I could have kept Ornithopter around to prevent one Thopter attack every turn. This is Bridge. Yeah. Alright, I, I think I'm past the point where I can realistically win this one unless my opponent just absolutely blunders. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the towel. GG's. Alright, uh, overall thoughts on the deck list. It's it's a fun glass cannon deck. It is a it is a great screenshot deck. Um, let's uh, let's get all of my friends on screen here. Um, as far as the main deck goes, as I've already said plenty of times, I want to swap two foundry assemblers. I think for two salvage titans and just have those in the main deck. So not once today did I like combo off fully and actually reach the bottom of my library. Um, now, my opponents did concede multiple times mid-combo, but maybe that does just mean that this should be a, a grape shot instead in the main deck. Uh, that's something to think about. So if I play two Salvage Titans in the main deck, that opens up two sideboard slots. And honestly, like some of these sideboard slots are a little bit loose. Like We didn't get good use out of the Metal Sys today. We never put one in play. We didn't get good use out of the Carpet of Flowers. Uh, we were unsure whether or not we wanted them. Um, maybe you can put some back calls in the sideboard. Like, you don't want to be doing that game one, I don't think, because, like, it's it's just slow, and it, it requires two different mana sources of different colors. If you draw, like, Double Seat or Double Tree of Tails, you can't actually cast it. Um, but, like, maybe in some of the post-sideboard games, that'll be appropriate, uh, especially maybe if you're just trying to race. I I don't know. Um, there's, there's options. I don't think this, this sideboard is set in stone or anything like that, um, but this deck is a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed playing it. Oh, I also think you can just play a couple more Grape Shots, like, end up with two or three copies. That might be a better finisher than that assist. Unsure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button. It's the easiest way to support me for free. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing for legacy, modern, and vintage content five days a week. And if you want to try out this deck or you want to get one of your own decks in the channel, that information is always in the video description. Have a great rest of the day.